Hello everybody, thank you for this time. We are agro tax team and our team, so we are the different specialized all together working for the first time. Um, Gabi Abale, she's engineering. Federico, he is a meteorology. Eddie, meteorology too. And Carla, she is geologist. And we have uh, experience, especially in, in core area, and this is our first time that we try to work in the oasis. Uh, when we decide to participate in this uh, hackathon, this is mm, our first idea. So I try to participate in the channel activity and the coaching, and use female and soil data, etc. with ability, skill, and look, uh, with our, our local knowledge or a shared experience and use it and work. But when we start to handle the information and in the first day when we receive the, the call or the instruction for this hackathon, we need to reveal all our uh, goals. That's why we, we put uh, in focus that lack of data or access to the data in the area the lack of knowledge of, about the climate variability from the, um, the future uses, as like um, agroactivity or any kind of uh, the government or the other entity. And we decided to, produ uh, to produce a tool that improves other products or other tools to use it in this uh, region that we, we are uh, working. That's why we decided to, to to be and offer one product that call it Bajada Tierra. Which is that round in, in English. And the idea is uh, to combine different products by uh, using this uh, data that was provided us in the hackathon, combine and achieve different products at different levels. First regional levels, uh, uh, local levels, and also forecast and after uh, products. So, uh, one of the main purposes is to use uh, free data available uh, uh, from uh, a common use platform and to produce uh, uh, exactly to produce products that uh, that are for an easy use for everyone. So, or at least that's why we try to achieve during this hackathon. So this is basically the idea of our product that was uh, coming on in this past few days, which um, we uh, take six basic steps. The first one was to gather all the data and explore the data, that is that's step number one, which is the, the exploration of the database that was available in Copernicus, in EUSA, in the group, also the sensor data and the other step. That was the first step. Second, second point, or point number two was to correct or to check out the data, we applied some, uh, cor uh, we correlate, for example, the data from the year of five uh, models with the sensor data, that's the soil and the air uh, temperature uh, sensor data, for example. We apply bias and so forth, uh, and topographic correction, for example, using the dam. And after that, we get, uh, we pass to the, the uh, step number three, that was to achieve regional data. And, and in that point, we uh, we get some agroclimatic maps. We we don't have experience working in the agro field industry, so we just choose one type of crop. For example, we choose uh, uh, I think everyone chooses the, the vineyard example, and we just try to to read what kind of uh, maps or tools or indexes are needed in this kind of industry. And we just try to, to see, okay, can, can we achieve this or, or can we improve the current or existing indexes uh, using this new data? Uh, so, for example, uh, in the agroclimatic maps, we uh, get different products like the monthly air temperature variation that was constructed with the dam, uh, bioclimatic indexes, we, we are going to show all, the, all of this, <coughs> bioclimatics or agroclimatic indices. And then we go to the local data. And with the local data, we just analyze the temporal 
series for soil profiles, and for example, we, we did a, a data filtering because the sensor sometimes have many mistakes, or not, not mistakes, or many data gaps. So we just did a data filtering from that and calculate, and not, not calculate, sorry, we, we just elaborate a tool that displays the variation of the either potential or temperature, and then with that, we advance more with some events that we saw in, in, the, in the soil sensors, and we develop a, a sonda warning. Uh, sonda is a, a really warm and really dry wind that is similar for Bowen or Santana in, in other regions the world, and that uh, we develop a, a new tool for that. And the last step it was try to integrate that in, 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 in a tool or a package that is called Bajada Terra, that is down to ground, because we wanted to down the the meteorological data at the, to the ground and also to, to make them more uh, accessible, more easy for use. So for example, this uh, is just a comparison. We, we made a, an animation that is, is not working. This is a comparison, for example, between the monthly uh, air temperature that uh, provided from the ERA model, if that is the old series, I think it's year 2001 to 2017, and that was downscale was corrected and upscaled to uh, just with a simple downscaling to the allos then to see for example which the, the line that is marked there is for example the the the, arc, the zero degrees isotherm that could uh, be used also for determination the of the freezing zones in zones in each month. The next one. Um, so for example. We, uh, in the agroclimatic, we are not now in, 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 still in regional data. We, for the agroclimatic data, we saw, for example, there is uh, an hydrothermal index, an hydrothermic index, which is the interathermic of the winter, for example. Mm -hmm. That basically, uh, that's the formula. And basically, what it shows is that the selecting a, a certain type of, of crop, it shows where are the places that are cold or warm or very warm based on uh, air temperature data. So we just don't, uh, don't scale it using the dam for the San Juan and Mendoza province. And for example, all the white areas are the mountain areas that are, of course, super cold for grapes. And the red areas are very warm. And the most, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yellow ones and light blue ones are the more good ones, for example. Next one. And also, uh, also uh, another index that we use is it was uh, combining the temperature and the precipitation to get like the um, hydrothermal, hydrothermic index that basically it, it says, okay, this is a place in which the, if there is a good uh, temperature and good uh, amount of humidity. So it, it could be used for the state, okay, it's good for a crop to uh, grow up here, but also if that index is really high, it could be uh, bad too because some uh, kind of fungus or uh, insect may grow up, may grow in those areas. So depending on the index values, uh, it those are good and bad. So we also wanted to show that these different indexes could be combined together uh, to get. Um, <coughs> maybe a more visual area or more easy uh, visualization tool. Yeah, and the, the point there is the point of the example, the Pedernal Vineyard, for example, uh, you will see that here is, is in a mild climate and with a lot of uh, lot of precipitation. So it is actually good for wine producing. Yeah. And what? <laughs> well, after that, uh, we go to the sensor part of the of the work. Um, we we saw there is temperature and uh, temperature from sensor of the air and versus uh, temperature of air uh, to the right and to the left uh, same or dew point temperature. So as you can see, the air square. Uh, present uh, really relative good values. The bias is uh, quite low, and the root mean square is, is, is 
Uh, what, what we see there is the, there is a good correlation between error height and set temperature sensors. Well, now you. What? Well, I, uh, right there you see the, the time series, uh, humidity, dew points up, and temperature down, and you see that there is a good correlation between them. Well, now you see the, the soil water potential uh, on the figure down. You see the temperature in shaded, and in contours, you see the uh, soil water potential. What we see there is that yeah, at 40 uh, centimeters, there is a, a minimum, so there is a not favorable for the roots growing. So uh, the, the person who, who Yes, flying to. We are analyzing only meteorological data. We don't have soil uh, log or description. Probably they have some problem in the in the soil. No. Okay. Well, and uh, the last part of the the work, uh, we use a sonda wind index, uh, which is uh, very useful because uh, this warm and dry uh, wind is not favorable for for the vineyard. So uh, as you can see there, uh, the whole series of the sensors, yeah, so term, uh, for all sensors, and um, we identified uh, three Sunday wind events. Yes, the first one is uh, in 23 April of 2006. And the, the index, the Sunday wind index is, is based on the logistive uh, adjustment. Yeah, uh, is made by the principal component analysis. So, uh, as you can see, the, the Sonda index uh, gives us a value of 96.7 probability for that day. And, and well, the other the other events uh, are really marked correlation with soil temperature and soil water potential. Well, uh, um, the utility is that our two tell us uh, when the, this index is very high, and the idea is that the, the decision maker could see what happened, or, because this index uh, not say you not say you the intensity of the wind or, or its warmth, uh, but just say yes, sonda or no sonda. So the person who need to take a decision uh, uh, for here, uh, could, could, could see those kind of graphics like a uh, meteor blue cross section for the for, for the forecast few days. So the, the person uh, could see wind temperature uh, profile. It's, it's more for a meteorologist, but it's, it's really important that the, the person uh, know this information. and. Yeah, uh, and the, yeah, the index uh, working this way is based on two on, on Wyoming soundings uh, for the present date. Uh, so the forecast is 24 hours and a GPS uh, model for three of up to seven days of sonar wind forecast. I. I would like to do it with Metro Blue, but just this morning uh, I understand it how to download uh, pressure levels. So uh, the idea is that when the value of this index uh, is really high, the, the tool provides you these cross sections and some of these, whatever that the meteorologists need uh, to assess the intensity or the duration of, of this event. So, the model give us the probability. The soundings are from Mendoza and from uh, Santo Domingo, Chile. So, uh, and to be together, we have one sound index. This is just for 24 hours. So, uh, this is the, the value for today. And the, the script downloaded the GPS 0.25 degrees and also applied the index. Wait a second. 
uh, it need to download the the data. So the internet allows us. You will see the output right now. Yeah. <laughs> what? So uh, it, it works when the, the run it, it downloads some. some uh, oh, okay. There you go. Now you see for day 23, day 24, and day 25, the Sonda win probability, yes, or using the Mendoza sounding model, vertical sounding. And then they're going to do that for the Chilean side, and then the joint model. So after that, um, uh, we redirect to the metro group, and we get all metrograms. So with the index, uh, we we'll say value 80, 90 percent. Um, the tool will provide you the those kind of maps. See. So one can can see the the real peligrosity or the model of peligrosity of that particular so event. Pedernal area is like in here more or less. Okay. There's no other questions. Thank you. Thank you again for the presentation.